Hello, Nedbank Pitch and Polish fans. Tonight we've got yet another thrilling episode lined up. Hope you're ready for it. Oh, you are? Let's dive right in then. There's only one spot left in the semi-final round and tonight we'll be finding out who secures it. Last week we saw Bandilo of Muscobe Holdings beat out Smongseni of Zinakere to join Cheslin of Innovo and Vraden and Avi of Breeze Delivery as one of our semi-finalists. Will Lutando or Keenan be joining them? We'll have to wait and see what happens in tonight's elimination. Before we catch up with tonight's contestants, I just want to remind you that this year, the 14th year of the competition, we're able to bring this amazing program to you and our entrepreneurs across the whole of South Africa, thanks to the support of our incredible sponsors. Our title sponsor, Nedbank, thank you for your commitment to supporting entrepreneurship. And another big thank you to our program sponsor, RaceCorp, and our venue sponsor, The Business Exchange. None of us would be here if it weren't for you. Before you ask, yes, of course, we're giving away yet another fantastic viewer prize tonight. That's coming up straight after the elimination. And as always, one of our competition questions will be related to tonight's pitches. So make sure you're paying attention. Now though, Let's see what pitching insights Yasmin has in store for us. Hi, and welcome back to our pitching tips. Business growth never happens by accident. It happens by having a clear, coherent vision and a strategy that builds purposefully to achieve that vision. Growing the business is not a strategy. Rather, growing the business is the result of the strategy implemented. In this episode, we'll be looking at Kenneth's pitch. Kenneth seems to be a talented ceramic artist, but his message is incoherent. Let's look at this short clip that points out just one of the many aspects of his presentation and answers that just don't line up. Uh, I'm doing so much in my current, in my current uh, production. It's where I'm supplying only two shops. One is in Brooklyn Mall in Pretoria. One is in Albertine. Did sense, you pick up the contradiction? I am so busy, but at the same time, supplying only two shops. Later, he speaks about using the money to buy a kiln, but he doesn't connect that to increased productivity or lowering costs. He talks about his products being unique due to his signature being on every pot, but it isn't on the one he gives the judges, and he fails to explain why that is a marketable advantage. In addition, he never mentions his name or brand being protected, so it could be copied by other players in the market. He mentions teaching others, but this seems more like a charitable gesture than an opportunity for growth. Strategy is the systematic building of systems and processes that allow the entrepreneur to separate themselves from the operations of the business. It creates a focus for the business and provides one direction that everything in the business pulls toward. Without this, the entrepreneur gets pulled into every idea they think may be viable. So be clear on how you are building the business and keep your plans aligned and you will have a coherent pitch that wows your investors. Back to you, Jose. Thanks, Yaz. I love the way Yaz is able to pick out key issues that could also impact your or my pitches. Speaking of pitches, first up, is Lutandum Chiza of Perfect Drilling. Let's see how he does. Welcome, Lutando. Hello, judges. Thank you. Uh, you understand you've got two minutes to pitch today? Yes. Okay, and do you've taken in all the feedback from the last round? Yes, I definitely worked on them. 
and um, <coughs> I've really improved on it. Okay. Great. Let's hand off. Five, four, three, two, one. Pitch and polish. Good evening, judges. My name is Lutando Mkriza, one of the directors of Intellex Group, uh, which started its operations in 2021. We have uh, our main business focus is on borehole drilling, uh, underground water extraction, aquifer testing, water quality testing, as well as um, installation of water purification systems. During the past two years of our operations, we've seen substantial growth in our business as we have uh, drastically grown because we started off hiring the machinery that we work with. But right now we've got an asset value of close to 7 million, which has improved our turnaround time in terms of project delivery, as well as increased our uh, gross profit margins when comparing the past three years. We have also just started a 36 months contract with Etiwin Municipality, which has actually helped us uh, uh, increase our sales revenue within the past six months to just over 3.6 million, despite other uh, private job that we do uh, service on a month-to-month -month basis. We actually identified our market during COVID where, water, where, where schools were in need of water due to hygiene purposes. So we actually thought that we were going to play in that market, but little did we know that we're actually going to uh, grow to where we are right now. Our USP is mainly focused on the fact that we actually provide our client uh, with a lifetime solution when it comes to water and we actually give them peace of mind by using state-of-the-art uh, machinery and equipment and, uh, and we also registered with the Bohol Water Association of South Africa for uh, 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 client confidence and we also have a combined experience of uh, 15 years when it comes to the industry and we provide them with a much longer guarantee period when it comes to uh, defects and liability period uh, 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 defects and liability period, which is 12 months as compared to the three months according to the JBCC contract uh, when it comes to construction work. So uh, if we were to win this 650,000, we would actually use 500,000 to actually acquire land, which would actually help us build our offices and 150 will actually go towards uh, the construction of the offices. You ran out of time there, Lutando. Okay, let's go to questions. Monique. Hi, Lutando. Hi, Monique. How are you? Good, thank you. I loved your Facebook page. I like your social pages. Um, you've got a lot of clear imagery, wonderful video footage. Um, what I find that lacks on them is that you don't have anything that says that you're a specialist in the industry um, or positioning yourself as a thought leader. But be that as it may, I want to understand the land that you want to purchase. Why would you want to purchase land as opposed to rent out? Uh, we have identified that uh, it's really affecting in us in terms of expenses. So we need an office in terms of, uh, so we can be able to safeguard our material during off-peak and during when we are working. So we can be more efficient, so we can prepare uh, our tools and uh, equipment before we actually go out to work so that we are efficient and, and uh, finish uh, projects on time. And how will that grow your business? Uh, that will grow our business in terms of efficiency uh, since we have to first prepare before we actually go out. So rather than renting, it will actually reduce uh, the rental uh, 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 overheads and then it will help us to be much quicker when we're going out to, to, to work. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just pick up on that? So if you put that 500,000 into more equipment and rented that equipment out, are you saying you'd make more savings on rental than you would on what you could rent the equivalent rent value of equipment out? You're no, we my don't. Question. <laughs> no, we don't rent out any material. No, no equipment. You don't no rent equip equipment. No, we don't. We actually service clients where we actually go out and uh, train so the, for them. So then explain the fact that you said we got seven million rands worth of uh, assets. Yes. Explain how that uh, adds value to you. Uh, that adds As value opposed to renting it. No, that adds value in terms of we are much quicker than before and our profit margins are much greater. Because when we are hiring, we end up paying and we're only making uh, about 20%. But yeah. when we own them, we use less diesel uh, because we are the ones which consume and buy the diesel. Yes. And so we can be able to manage the okay, cost. So let me follow on the question then. If you put 500,000 rand into the land or 500,000 rand into more equipment, which you would use and would be cheaper for you, which is going to give you a better return, the land or the equipment? Uh, the equipment can also assist us as well because uh, we still 
short of a few components that we need as well in terms of machinery. But we are quite comfortable in terms of the revenue that we're making from the current projects that we would be able to buy that machinery since we've already done it before. So last yeah. question for me. What, what, I, I'm not clear around your revenue because the last round we had a 36 million and we said 3.6 was the contract that you got. What is your total revenue? Is it 3.6 3 million or is it more? It's 3.6 million from the contract alone, which we have but, just recently started. But is there nothing else? But the revenue that we've made this year was 5.5 .5 okay. million. Okay. In Thank terms you. of sales. Monalisa? Thanks, Lutando. Um, Lutando, I was hoping this time you'd give a little bit more uh, thought to growing the private sector. I think the feedback we gave you last time was the risk associated with, um, call it being heavily invested in the public sector. Uh, uh, perhaps maybe you didn't have time. Have you given consideration to that? Uh, it was an issue of time because we do have uh, private work that we do mm -hmm. uh, on a month-to-month -month basis from clients which were like us before that are actually renting our material. So we go and um, implement projects on their behalf. Uh, so they actually pay us up front and then we are able to deliver for them. And then they are the ones which, let's say if it's not a private job or it's a government, they have to wait. But they had already paid us up front. Mm. But my question is, uh, how are you thinking about growing that more uh, versus trying to source more public work? Uh, we are basically try going to try and work out in terms of advertisement and actually trying to get out there because we see that there is a great potential because uh, there are new developments, malls, so our service can actually help in terms of managing utilities and uh, uh, cost-saving mechanisms for them. Okay. Last question from me. You sp spoke about growth in uh, gross margin, gross profit, but you didn't specify a number. So how much did you, what's the percentage growth? On our first year when we started without the machinery, we made 22%. And then we bought our first machine in 2022, of which we increased to 58%. And then this current uh, 2024, the past year, we've made uh, 62%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that's uh, all our questions. Uh, you may leave, thank you. Thank you, judges. I found that a tough one to judge. Don't know why. Am I the only one? Was it easy for you? No, it's not. Um, I take, there's a chronic fear with entrepreneurs and numbers. Yeah. And then I uh, wish there was a uh, medication for it. Uh, but um, I think they, they, there's, a, for me, the pitch has changed, uh, but in a different direction altogether versus uh, the last time. And there seems to be uncertainty around the, 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 the growth and the numbers, at least, at least for me. But so that's, why, that's why I'm having difficulty. Yeah, my difficulty is around purchasing of the land for 500,000. Versus equipment. Versus equipment. Because to me, in this economy right now... Why do you want to sink it into land and construction e costs? E exactly. Why would you do that now? You re the rentals are low. There's, you can, it's, uh, yeah, there's, um, I, d I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, I feel there's an emotive thing that we're missing yeah, that there's a sense of I want to have my own place and that might be at the cost of growth. Mm. He spoke about the he, owning the space would help in preparation and that might be a technical but thing. But, but he can rent it. Yeah, yeah. And also to your point, in investing in more equipment, I, I think he would have a better opportunity in the private sector and, 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 and mitigating his risk in the public sector. And I think that's exactly where the crux of that emotive piece is, is there's a false sense of security in the public sector contracts that he has. He's putting that down to demand mm. as opposed to realizing that actually that, you know, that's not going to hold true for very long and he needs to build that private uh, sector clientele. Mm. And it's a pity that he hasn't looked at that mm. because I think it's a very, very, very real problem. Yeah.
I, I wanted to hear that piece that I've been thinking about this and this is the plan. Mm. No one expects him from the last pitch to this pitch to have implemented all those things no, at sure. all. But at least come back with the next you know, chapter. This, this yeah. is how we're thinking about going after that market based mm. on that feedback. But um, yeah, it's his pitch and it's our time to score. Lutando. Mm -hmm. Hello, Puti Wunjain. Sophie Leninger. It's Kwan Skonaba. Perfect drilling. Tell me, this is the second round. Was that the perfect pitch? That was the best that I could do. Yeah, so according to me, it is perfect, but a bit of a challenge when it came to the questions. But yeah, we expecting anything, but we are positive that we'll go through. Okay, so before the questions, tell me about the preparation for the second round pitch. What did you do different? Uh, this time around, I tried to work on the input that uh, the judges gave me on the first round. Okay. Uh, but I believe uh, I might have also just left a few things. Okay. But um, so far, with that I've, I've given them, I'm quite happy because I answered as honestly as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my feedback on my side. So, your answers, do you think that you would have modified anything just to shorten it? What made it result in you running out of time? I, in terms of time, it was just the nerves most out of all things. Otherwise, during my practice runs, it used to, you know, fall just slightly a bit, uh, 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 maybe a few seconds uh, before the cutoff time. So if you're to practice again, let's say you make it through past elimination, what are you going to do different? I'm going to try and improve my pitch and uh, use as much feedback as I can from what the judges have said and uh, make sure that I articulate it well and finish uh, on time. Huh. Lutando, thank you so very much. Still wishing you the best on your journey going forward in this competition. Thank you. Give them all that you got. Thank you, we tried our best. Lutando did well to mention that he provides a longer guarantee than his competitors, but there were some concerns around his plans for growing his private sector clients. Now, will his scores reflect that? I guess we're going to have to find out later in the elimination. For now, let's watch the final pitch of round two. Ladies and gents, all the way from Cape Town, let's welcome back Keenan George of Smart View Technology. Welcome, Keenan. Thank you. How are you feeling? Oh, good. Oh, feeling good. Feeling good. Feeling good. Glad good, to be good. back. You took all the feedback from the last round? Yes, definitely. You've put it into this pitch? Yes, definitely. You haven't thrown out all the bad, the good stuff that you had from the last round? You kept it? Kept it, took out some stuff, but kept some of the good stuff. Okay, and you know there's two minutes? <coughs> yes. And you're ready right now? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one, pitch and polish. Did you know that the combined commercial and industrial sector collectively spends over 180 billion rand on water, electricity and gas? The electricity tariff has surged by 43% in the last three years and gas by 30%. With these stats, it's evident that we need better tools to manage our utilities to improve our profitability. My name is Keenan George, CEO and founder of SmartV Technology, and our vision is to create a utility conservation and sustainability tool to help organizations to better manage their utilities. But what are the issues? We have severe energy and water wastages, and we have a lack of utility management tools that provide organizations with the right data to improve their efficiency. The solution? SmartV Technology's utility management platform as a service provides organizations with actionable insights as well as predictive analytics to number one, improve their efficiency, and number two, help them achieve zero pollution goals. But what makes us different? We provide customers with bespoke BI reporting that helps them to uncover cost-saving opportunities as well as improve their operational efficiency. We also integrate into existing hardware, helping them not to rip out and replace existing infrastructure. We also continuously enhancing our platform and our innovation, and this is evident by us winning the GSIP Unido Award for the most innovative product in South Africa. But has this been validated? Yes, it has. Some of our notable clients like Virgin Active nationally saved 1,000 kiloliters of water um, monthly. PepsiCo saved 50% on their sewage costs. Our finance, we 
have a growth rate of 1.1 to 4.1 million rand in the last three years with our gross profit margin sitting at 85 percent and if we win this competition we will use this money strategically to invest 50 percent in our marketing initiative and 50 percent to enhance our product offering thank you thanks kenan sure good timing good pitch let's go for the questions mona lisa Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I must commend you on your pitch. I think really, really awesome. You took the feedback and you were able to give us a lot of detail. Um, maybe my, my question um, uh, to you, I mean, you obviously have uh, identified the, the use of the funding from marketing. What's your, what's your projection in terms of growth? How, what are your projections over the next three to five years? So, so currently um, we have an existing pipeline of opportunities of just over 50 million rand. Um, that is now capex and operational expenditure, right? Um, and we, uh, you, we want to use that money strategically to get that pipeline even uh, a bit bigger. Okay, and what do pipelines, just, just sorry, clarify for me, pipeline of clients that would give you that value of uh, revenue? Yes, that's, that's that disqualified leads okay. that went through a proposal as well as a, a demo of our platform. Okay, so and then over the next three to five years, you, you're saying that you're targeting how, uh, how to, to phase that in? So in terms of the next three to five years, we, we are looking at um, a profit rate um, or a profit margin of just over 35 million rand. Over the next three to five years? Three to five years, yes. Okay. Monique. Hi, Kenan. Hi. Tell me, what is the blocker for you to meet or, or to meet that demand in that pipeline, besides funding? So, uh, first of all, our sales cycles are quite long, right? Um, and we also, we need to continuously be in front of our customers, right? Whether we educate them, all right? We're continuously nurturing them. Um, so, and with, with, with the funding, we will, it will help us to be, because uh, you know, digital marketing is quite expensive, and especially where our target market is, which is on LinkedIn, it's quite um, expensive to run these campaigns continuously. So we normally run them and stop them. So with this funding, it will help us to continuously be in front, in, uh, in front of them, explaining the pain, pain points better, educating them, um, and basically closing the deal. You say there's a gap in terms of education but there is a but there's a pipeline of opportunity, so somebody is understanding what they're about to invest in. Mm -hmm. So 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 there's the the pipeline, right? That the opportunities that we still need to convert, but to grow that pipeline, we need to continuously nurture, educate our customers. So, but the the pipeline, we just still have to continuously nurture them, and 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 by doing that, we what we normally send weekly emails educating them. Um, about the, uh, the, the existing issue that they still have. Because especially our market, they are very busy individuals at the facilities. So they normally get, um, uh, you need to go and solve this. And they get busy and they leave it while they're busy solving their daily issues. And then while we're continuously nursing them, um, it comes back to them and we then basically close that deal. Going on Mona Lisa's question around, where, like what are the growth projections in your, in your company? Based on that, you said you've got a pipeline of opportunities. Yes. Right. So I want to understand why you can't unblock that pipeline. But you're saying that's potential leads. Yeah. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not actually customers sitting, waiting for you to service them. No, no, no. So, so they were given a proposal. They understand the, uh, the, the, the costing around everything. And this is a matter of time of, uh, up until it closes. So you'd say, sorry, I just want to clarify. So you'd say that, that you're... Your, the weakness in your business right now is converting existing leads yes. into, into customers. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. I've got a few questions for you. How have you funded the business so far? So myself and another partner, um, I brought the technical expertise and he brought um, money basically. So we are 50-50 investors in the business currently. Okay. You spoke about your GP. Uh, being 85, what's your net profit? Is, is there a profit? Are you profitable? No. Okay. Only this month. Only this month. Well, it's a good month then. <laughs> Tell me about the IP because I'm also involved in the IoT space and very often the platforms are owned by other people and you basically construct a, a platform on somebody else's 
mm -hmm. software. But there are situations where it's your own software. Yes. So what is your situation? Is it your your it's software? A, it's our own software. We've built it for the last five From years. From scratch? Yes. Okay. And you spoke about in your, your pitch what makes us unique and what our USP. But is there no competition in the facilities management space? Are you the only guys there? No, no, no. There, there is competition. But again, what differentiates us is that our, our competition wants to do bulk monitoring. We want to do sub-monitoring to understand health of machines to, so that we can do that predictive analytics to tell you that this machine will die or this machine will break down at this point in time. So, y yes, we do have competition. All right, Kiran, thank you. You may leave. Thank you. Your thoughts, Monique? Yeah, I think, I mean, a, gr a great pitch. I think it's a very well-rounded pitch. Um, mm. He covered all, all the key elements. He had enough time. Um, look, is like a trade, right? So you've yeah. you got to listen quickly as well. But but very good pitch. No, look, having been, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm in one of these businesses, um, it, it's, it's a tricky growth path. It's mm. not that simple. You can make a, a lot of money if you've got the right product, but uh, the cash flow management is very, very tough in a business like this. Mm. Yeah. Your mm. thoughts? Yeah, no, I think similar to, to Monique, I mean, he's got value of market, right? You mm. could almost say value of industry that um, is potential. I think then what I was missing was, I mean, he's secured the clients and I, are there upselling opportunities within those clients besides now having provided the service in the view? The client makes the saving. Is there, you know, um, other opportunities for them to have a, you know, let's call it a stake in that um, savings that would have been achieved. So, I, yeah, to, to, uh, same with Monique, the financials don't give me a sense of the growth path, but I think Alon is testifying that it's a tricky one. And I'm glad he did, he said that there are competitors, but mm. I think they just need to but be careful. But he didn't for protecting. That, right? Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> yeah. But let's get scoring. Keenan, how are you doing, sir? I'm very good, thanks. So it seems like you blew the judges away there. Awesome. I, uh, I, I felt like I had a good pitch. Okay. Um, and very, very better than the first. Okay. Um, and you're very confident you had about four seconds left on the clock? Yes, and I didn't even look at the clock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you've been rehearsing? Y yes, 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 yes. But, uh, that's, that's part of me now. Okay, uh, so you've been polishing your pitch, I see. Yes, yes, yes. You're here in the second round because the first round saw you with a great confident and solid pitch. What's What's been the changes that you had to make? So they wanted to under understand what was the market demand, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they also wanted to understand what was our USP as well. Okay. Right? And okay. that was the main key things that they gave me feedback. And obviously I spoke too fast the first round. Okay, okay. And I had to take out some of the stuff. And from a business perspective, how do you feel that the judges were critiquing your business this time around? Um, I think it wasn't that bad. I mm -hmm. think I could have um, uh, answered some of the questions a bit better, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think overall it's okay. Okay. How are you feeling about elimination? Um, I'm confident. I'm confident. Let's, let's wait and see. Okay, we can wait and see. But another thing that we cannot wait to see is how you're going to implement what you've learned in your business going forward. Tell me about the experience. How has that been? Yes, I, I have to say my, my mentor has been a great help, right? Especially on the financial side of things, right? I um, really took his feedback, right? And he made things very simple for me. So would you say that the influence, what helped you in today's pitch, was that more your mentor or was that what you have learned? I would say it was a mix. It was a mix. Okay. That means there's been a lot of learning, a lot of growth, but a lot of guidance as well. Yes, definitely. Keenan? Thank you so very much. Thank Highly you. appreciate it. Wishing you the best for the rest of the competition. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks Thank so much. You. Wow. Now that was a confident pitch. And the judges seemed impressed too. Honestly, the quality of contestants this year is next level. How are the judges going to decide between Lutando and Keenan? I mean, they both put forward such well thought through pitches. Right now, I'm feeling stressed for the contestants and the judges. 
<laughs> but let's join the judges right now and let's see what they're thinking. I mean, they never give away too much juicy information before the elimination. But I can still try to get a few interesting nuggets, right? <laughs> wow, judges, what a round. How are we feeling? I'm feeling great. No? I, I wonder what the contestants are feeling. Mm. But So between these two businesses, we have two very strong pitches and two businesses that have the likelihood to scale. Which are you leaning towards? Look, they were, they're both uh, businesses that are hard to scale. The one seems easier to scale, but from my experience, it's, it's actually very difficult to scale a business like that profitably because that it sucks cash as, as it scales. And both those businesses are, are it's called capital heavy, whether it's human capital heavy, in other words, coders, or it's uh, capital heavy, i.e. machinery, it'll suck cash quite uh, in, in a big way early on. And it's only after a while that, that the cash will start to pump out of the other side. And I have that sort of question to both of them, have they thought about that as they scale and should they scale if they haven't thought, of, uh, thought about that? That's my question back to them. Monique, uh, when looking at Keenan's business, how sustainable are those numbers? I know he does have big clients and he does have a track record, but how sustainable are his financials? Yeah, he does have big, he does have big clients. Um, and I think it's the same um, for the other contestants as well. They've, they've got big clients, whether it be public or, or private, but big clients does not necessarily mean revenue. Mm. Um, you know, with, with Keenan, the, the margins, his margins really need to be looked at um, mm. because, you know, his net margins, his net margins yeah. really need to be looked at. And Mona Lisa, what would Lutanda need to consider? This competition has brought him to this point. What does he need to consider in order to take his business, his pitch and himself, his own personal development to the next level? I think Lutando, for me, um, missed the opportunity to, to go and give some thought to the pri growing his private sector um, as deliberately as he seems to be growing not only the public sector, but the social impact of his business. And I think that's all well and good. Um, and, and, and I think that was the missed opportunity because then it would have uh, necessitated him to look at how best to use the funding. Um, so that was that uh, disconnect in terms of the funding not actually driving, um, I think, an opportunity that he's missing. Um, and also, you know, there's something to be said about technical heavy businesses. Um, they require a lot of investment um, and require a lot of um, sustainability insofar as, as growth. So, so both contestants would have a very difficult time in really honing in on that scale magic. Yeah. Once again, thank you, judges. That brings us to the end of the second round. We're now going through to see which of the contestants will be eliminated. Keenan Lutando, welcome to the elimination. This is the last group in this round. So you've been waiting a long time, a couple of weeks now, to, to find out uh, which one of the two of you is going to be eliminated and which one's going to go through to the next round. Let's start with you, Keenan. Uh, uh, let's start with the positives. You spoke about the award that you got. You know, it's, done, it's great to start bringing bring confidence into you as a, an organization. I love the fact that you used examples, you know, specific examples, uh, you know, to explain to, to us how your product has benefited the clients and of course dropping the names of the clients, bringing those big brands into it, once again bring, giving me confidence. Uh, your pitch was really, really, really good. It was one of the best uh, pitches uh, we've seen uh, in the show. Uh, you took a lot from the feedback from the previous round and uh, you brought it into this round. Spoke a bit fast, fast, but you had a lot to get through, through 
but it was structured, it was, it was good. On the negative side, um, you know, the, the, the thinking is looking at the numbers and you know that uh, pitch and polish is, is not just about how well you pitch, but we go and look at your numbers and go and try and understand them. So after your pitch, we bring the numbers in, we look through the numbers to see, A, if what you're saying is true, and B, you know, what are you missing and what are we missing so that we better understand your business. What, what we're concerned about in your business is the business's ability to scale. Because if I look at your numbers and look at your monthly overhead, you, you don't seem to have a big dev team in there. It's probably just you. You're probably the one of the, you or somebody else is the coder, the developer there. And so as a business scales, when you start to get those big clients, they're going to say, well, what happens if you get hit by the proverbial bus? You know, then what have we got? So big corporates who are using, you know, smaller companies are very concerned about that continuity. And so it's, it's easy to get small jobs. It's hard to get big jobs for that reason, because if you mission critical for them, they're not going to give you as good a chance as if you were a much bigger business. That's why bigger businesses generally get that type of work. So I, I wanted to hear, and maybe something to consider uh, for the future is, is for your business is how you overcome that problem for 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 your your business what what do you do is it an outsourced developer is it another developer is it or even you need to mention the developer the development team because we understand that's your business and then i asked the question because you know i've been around i've got gray hair you mentioned all these fancy brands were they really paying you a lot? Are they just proof of concepts? Were they just doing these micro things and you're just taking their brand and they actually paid you nothing or, or you know, 10,000 Rand to do that? Uh, I don't know. Like I'm a, a little bit skeptical because I've been around for a long time. And the one thing that um, I think you missed out on, which was a big mistake, is to talk about your recurring revenue. Investors want to hear recurring revenue. And in software, recurring revenue is everything. And you missed that piece. That was, that was the, like, you did very, very well. And then I was like, come on, say the recurring revenue. Say it, say it, say it. And you didn't say it. And that just, like, brought you right down from a points perspective. But overall, a good pitch. Uh, and, yeah. So... If you get through, take those points. If you don't get through, take those points. Lutando, you spoke about your authority to be in the industry. I love that. Like, like you deserve to be there. Got a great sense that you know what you're doing. I loved, loved, loved the guarantee. I love the way that you constructed the guarantee. We provide the guarantee longer than others. I thought it was a great point. Yes. Also, when you guarantee your, your work for longer than others, it shows confidence in your own business. Your pitch was also very, very good. It was a good pitch. Um, and uh, we get a sense from your pitch that technically you know how to run that business. Like, you know how to run that business. You're not somebody who's just doing this uh, as a, a hobby. This is, this is your life. This is, this is what you do. On the negative side, your numbers, you, you, you vacillated because in the beginning I thought you knew your numbers then you didn't know your numbers then you knew your numbers like I didn't know what you memorized and what you knew and what was true and what wasn't because I know in these situations you can say 58 percent 85 percent you know in the moment I'm not going to go and check them but if you get through to the next round you know you you, you be sure we're going to check them okay from a, a risk perspective I think your biggest downfall like Keenan with a, with a recurring revenue. Your biggest hole in your, your pitch was that whole public-private sector discussion. You know, th these are, f I, I want to say, seasoned judges that have been, a, been around for a while and understand the risk around um, the, the public sector and why you need to balance the business from, from that perspective. So as an investor, if, if you asked me to invest in your business and you told me that you had just these few contracts with these municipalities, I'd go, thanks, but no thanks, because it's too risky. And you missed a great opportunity, you got the clue in the last round, and you didn't use it. And that really was, was the worst part of, of the pitch, is that you didn't address that properly, and we gave you the clue the last time. 
And then the last thing was that whole discussion around whether you needed to buy your own land or not, the rent and buy. In our discussions, we felt that it might be an emotive and not a commercial dis uh, decision that you, you want to make. And we're thinking, did we give you the, f the 650000 and you just buy a plot of land that you can call your own? Isn't it cheaper still to, to rent and, and deploy that cash into something that would make you grow? So once again, I'm sitting here with two incredible pitches, but with two fatal mistakes in your pitches. Each one of you made a fatal mistake. But which one will, will it be more fatal for? And the person who is going through to the next round is Keenan. Latanda, well done. Please take everything that we've said. You're a great entrepreneur. You're going places. And good luck out there. Thanks. Well done, Keenan. Please take everything that we've said and you may leave. Well done. Ash, it never gets any easier saying goodbye to a contestant, does it? Like the further we go into the competition, the more invested I feel in each of them. But well done, Keenan, for taking that last slot in the semi-final round. And Ash, Lutanda, I'm sorry to say goodbye to you. But I know you have a very bright entrepreneurial journey ahead of you. Now, are you ready for our viewer competition? Great, me too. If you want a chance to get your hands on tonight's 5,000 Rand Avo Super Shop Voucher from Nedbank, as well as a strategy mentorship package from RaiseCorp, that includes one-on-one -on -one mentorship and a month's free access to Flowcode business scaling software, all you have to do is answer these questions. What percentage of the 650,000 prize money does Keenan plan on spending on his marketing? Then go online to flowcodepowered.com and tell us, is Flowcode a software? Yes or no? Send us a WhatsApp to 066-232-7355 with your name and the right answers and you'll go into the random draw. If you're picked as our winner, we'll get in touch with you and announce your triumph on social media later this week. And that's it, folks. We've come to the end of round two. From 16 to eight contestants, and now from eight to the last four standing. The 14th season of Nedbank Pitch and Polish really has been a roller coaster. But be sure to join me next week, Tuesday at 7 p.m. sharp, because we have a little surprise in store for you and the contestants. From me, Khosi Khalif. Good night. It was a very powerful experience, and um, it's worth um, every moment that we spent here. So we're quite happy about the opportunity that we've been here. And we're obviously looking forward to improving from what we just had from the judges. So we're quite excited for the near future. And we believe that uh, we're still going to do well in business. And we are very positive about the feedback that we got there.